Um, welcome everybody and now call to order the special meeting of the Anchorage Assembly. It is April 1, 2024. We're noticed from 2 to 2.30. It's 2.04 p.m. This is no April Fool. Here we are again. <laughs> Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Member Myers. Here. Member Martinez. Present. Member Rivera. Present. Member Bronga. Here. Member Johnson. Here. Chair Constant. Here. Vice Chair Zolotel. Here. Member Voland. Member Brawley. Here. Here. Member Salt. Here. Member Perez Verdia. You have a quorum. Thank you. And just as we have such last minute notice of the meeting, we'll go ahead and mark the members who are not present excused. Also, a note that the agenda has Mr. Cross still listed. We are now an 11 member body until the certification of the election this month. Um, Ms. Bronco, would you please lead us in the pledge? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Brawley, would you read the land acknowledgement, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. A land acknowledgement is a formal statement recognizing the indigenous people of a place. It is a public gesture of appreciation for the past and present indigenous stewardship of the lands we now occupy. It is an actionable statement that marks our collective movement toward decolonization and equity. The Anchorage Assembly would like to acknowledge that we gather today on the traditional lands of the Dena'ina Athabascans. For thousands of years, the Dena'ina have been and continue to be the stewards of this land. It is with gratefulness and respect that we recognize the contributions, innovations, and contemporary perspectives of the Upper Cook Inlet Dena'ina. Thank you. Today we have one item on the agenda. It's item 4A, Assembly Memorandum AM 317-2024. Amendment number eight to contract with BDO USA LLP 44000007061 to provide professional auditing services for the municipality of Anchorage. Ms. Zelotil. Uh, move to approve. Second. Ms. Zelotil moves. Ms. Brawley seconds. Item is now before us. Ms. Zelotel. Thank you. Um, there is an amendment that needs to be made, so I will go ahead and make that now. Um, I move to amend deletion of lines five and six on page two, and then change throughout the document amendment number eight to read amendment number seven. So Second. A motion to amend by Ms. Zelotel, seconded by Ms. Brawley. Do you want to speak to it, or is that sufficient? Any objection to the amendment? Anyone in the room? Members on the phone? I'm hearing no objection, so the amendment has been made. Next, we have the main motion before us as amended. Anyone wish to speak to the item? Ms. Alatel. Thank you. Um, so this item is so that we can um, continue with our professional auditing services for the municipality of Anchorage. Um, as most of you know, um, getting closed out financials for 2022 continues to be an issue for the municipality. Um, so it's really important that we get this done today so that there is no pencils down time lost so the auditors stay at work. Um, in particular, I guess I wanna start to set the expectation that first quarter budget revisions may start to look different because we don't have audited financials. We don't know if we, there is any money. Um, and we've been told, frankly, that there isn't. Um, so that might change uh, the way we handle first quarter um, which is in just a few short weeks. So I, I wanted to take this opportunity to start to set that expectation unless that money was already budgeted in for 24 um, and might just be moved. Thank you. Mr. Rivera. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so this item is uh, a fairly simple item. It's a $65,000 contract amendment uh, to BDO through June. Um, but it is uh, very much a critical one. Um, I think as uh, Member Zalatel stated, um, this is 
uh, important for us so that BDO can continue doing their work. Their um, existing contract uh, ended yesterday, and so this will allow them to continue through June, though, though it is my expectation that uh, BDO will be done with their work by the end of this month, by the end of April. Um, in addition to getting the ACFR done, um, there are a couple of key critical components, which I have talked to folks about repeatedly, um, issues like the uh, SEMT funds hanging in the balance, uh, self-insurance from the state hanging in the balance, making sure that we get this ACFR done um, by this month, <laughs> no more delays, by this month, I think is uh, critically important. And then certainly looking forward to the future to see what we can do to ensure we get a more timely actor done. And, and there are a variety of ideas that are um, being tossed around for that. And I look forward to that discussion once this actor is completed. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Salt. So uh, thank you, Chair. I'll clearly support this. I was just curious if anyone could speak to why this wasn't brought up earlier and why we required a special meeting. Was it just an oversight? Thank you. That is quite a question. Mr. Rivera. Yeah, I'm happy to uh, address that. Um, so I, I think as I said earlier, the contract um, was amended. We amended it, I believe, uh, uh, in either in December or first meeting in January to go through March 31st. Uh, it wasn't until last week that I got notification that we needed to uh, extend the contract further. Uh, and this was the first opportunity to do that. I know we had a special meeting last week, but um, it just wouldn't, we didn't have enough time to get everything ready for that. So that's what the special meeting is for. Um, so certainly I think going into the future, we wanna make sure um, that sort of between the administration and the assembly that we're all clear on the timeline going on so that we don't have to do special meetings for a $65,000 contract. That answer your question, Mr. Salt. Yeah, yes, it does. Thank you. All right, Ms. Brawley. Yeah, just briefly, um, I do support this and I understand the need for it. I think that was already laid out. I just want to underscore as well. Um, I'm one of the new members and for uh, maybe the other new members benefit. This certainly isn't normal. <laughs> um, it's not only not normal that we don't have this done in time. It's also not normal that, um, as Mr. Rivera said, that 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 he, the board, at, audit chair committee, sorry, commit, audit committee chair would have to take such an, a hands-on role to make sure that this gets done. And so that's just really important to understand. Similarly, how several things that myself, Mr. Rivera, and others have worked on over the last, um, certainly over the last year and before that, are not responsibilities of the assembly, but our choice is to not to let it not happen or to make sure that it gets done. And so um, at least the choice that I've made several times is to make sure it gets done. So thank you so much to Mr. Rivera for shepherding this and making sure that it happens. And uh, I do look forward to discussions about how we can avoid this in the future, because as one of the co-chairs of the Budget and Finance Committee, it is extremely difficult to, to do this job and to give um, guidance and direction to other members of how they can engage in the budget process. So as Member Zelotel said, in the meantime, We've heard many times that we don't have additional funding. And so that is the posture that we are taking because that is the fiscally responsible thing to do. And that is how we are gonna be appro approaching the first quarter budget revisions. Thank you. Right, um, I'll just say for myself that uh, it was very frustrating that this request didn't come in advance of the regular meeting last Tuesday or even the special meeting on Friday um, it had been told to assembly members on Thursday that it needed to happen, but that's simply not enough time, especially in a week immediately following when we had two meetings for an opportunity. And um, this is one of those areas of the municipality where the lines are blurred according to the charter because the charter um, authorizes the assembly and requires the assembly to conduct an annual audit, but the assembly has the audit run through the finance department and the budget department because that's where it should be. And so this is one of those gray areas where who, who's, whose job is it? And ultimately it is our job to fund and drive and it is the administration's job to execute the audit. 
contracts and get the work done and support the auditors. And so um, this one is challenging because yes, an argument could be made. The assembly should have been following that the extension that they made to the contract for three months at the beginning of the year ended without an audit being completed 12 months after the audit was supposed to be done. And so this makes it very, very, very difficult for the assembly to do its job its job, our job, is to manage the fisc of this municipality, to approve the budget, to approve amendments to the budget, to authorize expenditures. We are authorizing in the blind because we do not have audited financial statements still a year later. And now, as of a week ago, I was told we would be receiving the audit at the end of the first week of April. Now the ball has moved three more weeks, uh, from what I heard from Mr. Rivera, to the end of April. And so um, I don't know what we do if at the end of April we hear it's going to be the first week of May. I don't know what we do at that point because much of this municipality is at risk right now for not having this work done. So, yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, we are coming upon the levy here pretty soon in the dark, in the blind. Ms. Bronga. Okay, this is going to be a really stupid question, but I'm thinking ACFR is Audit Committee Financial Report, but I'm not really positive what ACFR means. Felix. Yeah, the, the acronym stands for Annual Comprehensive Financial Review. It's basically our annual audit that has a variety of components to it. So the ACFR is the, the municipality as a whole, I think it's a like general government. And then there's a variety of other parts. So the port has a standalone audit. SWS has a standalone audit. I believe AU has a standalone audit. Uh, ACDA has one. And then a FEMA, uh, excuse me, not just FEMA, federal grants also have a, an audit. And there's also a state grants audit as well. So it's pretty complex, but all of it together is what I mean when I say the action. Thank you so much. All right. Anyone else? Mr. Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I would just offer, and I know you've heard this all from Mr. Thurn, or you all have heard this from Mr. Thurn. He's not here today. Um, I would offer that Mr. Thurn and Mr. Cipriano, who is in the audience, are pushing both the municipal staff and BDO as hard as they possibly can. And that's not meant to be in any way pejorative of BDO or the staff. Everybody is working as hard as they can on this. Um, I'm not making excuses. I think many of you are aware of some of the reasons that we have ended up where we are, turnover in the CFO's position, um, the additional workload related to COVID-19. I believe there's additional workload related to the earthquake. There's a lot that has come into this, but I can assure you that in weekly meetings with Mr. with Mr. Thurn and others, this is the highest priority of the finance group. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Hearing and seeing none, members may proceed to vote. Madam Clerk. Member Myers. Yes. Member Martinez. Yes. Member Rivera. Yes. Member Bronga. Yes. Member Johnson. Yes. Chair Constant. Yes. Vice Chair Zolotel? Yes. Member Brawley? Yes. Member Salt? Yes. That passes nine to two. Nine or to nine zero. zero. Sorry. Yeah. On a vote of nine to zero, AM 317 2024, as amended, has passed the body. Next, we come to audience participation. Anyone from the audience wish to participate? Come forward. You'll have three minutes. Please state your name and what part of town you're from. When you get a mic, just go ahead and grab that one. It's fine. Uh, it's Mark Littlefield I'm from Eagle Rivers. And uh, I just had a quick question since we had the, you know, the explanation of an acronym and I'm confused on what BDO USA is. I'm not familiar with that. So, and this is probably long term, and I'm coming in to tell into it. I just like to know what BDO USA means. 
So as audience participation, we generally don't answer questions. If you're done with your audience participation, That's it. Okay. thank you. Then we'll move on to member comments. Um, anyone want to answer that question? Ms. Alatel. Sure, I'll use my comment. BDO USA is our audit firm. So they audit us on an annual basis. Yeah, so it's outside auditing company. Okay, we'll go ahead and do the audit member comments now. Ms. Bronga. No comment. Thank you, Ms. Brawley. No comment. Ms. Alatel. No, thank you. On the phone, Mr. Rivera. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, I look forward to hopefully reporting good news at the April 9th meeting and then hopefully reporting that we're done at the second meeting in April. But I'm going to knock on some wood just in case. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Mr. Salt. No comments. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Myers. No additional comments. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. No comments. Thank you. Mr. Martinez. No additional comments. All right. Thank you. And I have no comments either. Um, motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. We are Second. adjourned. Thank you.